Hello, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Dr. Rose's Perfume Corner. Today I have Mr. Meleg. Is it Meleg or Melej? Uh, you can call me, no, Meleg, yeah, Meleg. Meleg, okay. Matthew Meleg here with me from Canada from uh, Meleg Perfumes, guys. I, I am excited to have you on the show today. I've been trying to connect with you for a while uh, to have you on the show, but you know, time hasn't worked out so well for me, but thank you so much for being here today. I'm excited. I saw your profile online one day and I said I had to have you here. So welcome. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm very honored to be with you. And uh, I brought you some roses because you're- I saw that. <laughs> thank you, you guys. He's a, he's a gentleman. <laughs> so uh i have a few a few of my uh, followers here these people have been here with me forever so oh. why don't we start with you telling me about yourself oh here we have the book oh uh, yeah this is my book my oh um what's about myself i'm just a, a farm farm boy from a farm and it's, I always like art and I always like making some things, painting and uh, drawing. And I come from the countryside, you know? Okay. So when you're from the countryside, you try to entertain yourself and do some self activities and always okay. like that. And I went to college for like uh, cooking to be the cook and I went to college also I went for painting and like designing stuff okay so but uh, I never did any of those things and after college and university I went to Japan and I lived there for a long uh, like a decade Okay. And then I came back uh, to Canada and teach myself how to make perfumes. You teach yourself to make. Okay. So how did you how did you get started uh, with making perfumes? Hmm. So, you know, the main thing is like learning the individual materials, like okay, to study the essential oils and study the various uh, masks and different things you put in to make a perfume uh, because the perfume is just the perfume is all the things that are inside of it. So I okay. started to study these things for no, no reason. I just like to smell, you know, and then write down mm -hmm. what I smell and put the language to scent, um, putting the language and the words and the adjectives to I started with uh, essential oils and I kept the, uh, I, I had no, per like, there, there was, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just putting adjectives, oh, something smells like this. Why? Okay. And then I kept collecting more and more stuff and then making observations and then go to the library and take out books and looking online how do i make perfumes uh -huh. and now i have a laboratory uh like 400 materials something like okay. this so and how many I, I was looking um on fragrantica and i saw there are a, a lot of fragrances but what what was the first year you made you made your first fragrance oh my first like my first very simple perfume was like really bad you know of course um that's maybe like as soon as i returned from japan like 2017 or something okay I, I, I was working like um like my hobby like i i like to do artistic stuff but uh my parents and my family is eastern european from very okay. poor, very poor country uh, and uh, I always work with like my hands and my body. Um, always did labor. Like I w when I returned from Japan, I was like lifting the bricks and digging 
the sand and washing buses at nighttime. Okay. So it was very boring. Like I didn't use my brain at all. Uh, just washing buses from eight o'clock at nighttime till six o'clock in the morning every day. Never see sunshine, you know. <laughs> and so when I got home, I was studying this. Okay. Making perfumes on my on my own. Um, and then I went to visit my mother uh, in Toronto, and I saw uh, Victor Wong from the Zoologist. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Victor, he's a nice guy. Uh, he's also a Canadian guy. Um, so he smelled some of my perfume. I think I brought 40, 40, like four zero, 40 perfumes with me. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I said, hey, do you have like five minutes to meet for coffee? And he's like, okay. And I come with like a bag. <laughs> I'm like, no, okay. And he's like, yeah, it's okay. Why don't you try this one, this one, this one? Okay, okay. So... I made Etsy website and I started to sell uh, little by little and I know some perfume reviewers, they like some vintage stuff and so I sent down vintage stuff because you know when you are like a uh, self-taught perfumer, like on the internet you can search, 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 search around yeah. and always looking for information uh, but usually what you have available is like these really old vintage perfumes like nobody cares anymore so they just put the information on the internet so this is how i started to learn like from the uh -huh. about anyways i sent uh so i learned from these and then I, I i i made many perfumes in this kind of style because it's the only style i knew uh, at that time and probably from 2017 to 2019 I was making perfumes, but just for myself and for my friends and for, I, I just like making it, you know? Uh, and then I think 2019, I, I sold my first perfume. 2019, okay. Yeah. So, how I many fragrances? Like four years or something before I ever even release anything, you know? Okay, is that what you do full time currently? Yeah, 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 yeah I'm lucky, okay. I'm lucky. How many fragrances? Because I I look on Fragrantica, and mm. uh, I cannot tell how many in your in the, the database. How many have you made total? I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so no, I don't. okay. All right. Let me tell you what what I yeah, see. What something. I see now. I, I, I see know. Birch Star. Yeah. Yellow Wood Cafe. Yeah, Birch Star is right here. Actually, I'm making some more today. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So you can see Birch Tar. Birch Tar, yeah. Okay. Silo Wood Cafe. Uh, Civet. Yeah. Civet Cat, yeah. It's uh -huh. uh, Golden Guy. Yeah, that one's made from like real uh, tobacco. Tobacco, okay. Honey and Deer Moss. Mm. Yeah, that one's very different. Which one is your favorite? No, I, I, I don't have a favorite one, to be honest, I think. Okay. I just like always making stuff. So whatever I'm making at that moment, uh -huh. it's important for me. Uh, for this spring, I'm going to make a perfume called Arashiyama. Okay. And it's going to be like um, yuzu and, and cedar and salt and the kind of fresh and bitter and green. And then when it dries down to kind of nice um, wood. So this one's my favorite because I'm working on it at this moment. Yeah. Uh, someone made a comment here. They said to uh, make us some perfume. <laughs> okay, I'll make you perfume. <laughs> oh, that person is very nice. Okay, so which one is your wife's uh, favorite fragrance from the ones oh, that you make? No, 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 no. My wife hates perfume. Yeah. She hates perfume? Oh, yeah, absolutely. She hates it. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay so that, that's odd but you know, but you like you, you love perfume obviously right we're a good couple because she's very organized uh-huh and very steady okay uh, and i'm very forgetful and uh you know like not business guy just artist guy 
Okay. So my wife does a book thing and like these kinds of things. I, I don't. Without her, I'm just chaos. I don't know. Okay. So so so. so yeah. Were you always like that? All your life? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, and you currently live in Canada, right? Yeah, I'm in Vancouver at, at, at this Vancouver, moment. okay. Yeah, at this moment. Yeah, pretty cold there. Cloudy. Very huh? cloudy. Very so cloudy. cloudy. Yeah. No sunshine. It's not do you do you suffer from climate depression? Oh uh, yeah. Al yeah. Al al already I have uh depression and then living in Vancouver all my life. Okay. So Not then, uh, why are you why are you still in Vancouver, though? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a yeah. good question. Maybe, why maybe we'll, there? Yeah, you know, maybe we will go to a sunnier city. I think actually, actually, you are correct. You know? Because if you have a difficult time in one location, it's better just try to move if you can. So okay. probably we will. Yeah. Where would think. you Where would you move to? I don't know. Maybe Calgary is a very sunny, sunny, city. very sunny yeah. in the States, maybe in the States or maybe still in Canada. Oh my God. If I could go to the States, I would love to, you know, have you ever been to the States? Yeah. My sister, she lives in Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Okay. I used, I used to live in Chicago. Yeah. Big, big city. It's yeah. a little bit smaller than Toronto. I think. Really? Yeah. Our okay. biggest. I've, I've never been to, 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 to Toronto. I've been Toronto. to Montreal. Yeah, I've never been to Toronto. Yeah, Toronto's bigger, much bigger than Montreal. Okay, but it's very, it's very cold there. Oh, so my, my sister is in the chat. She said you should come to Florida. <laughs> I think so. You know, I came back from Mexico and I was there with my mother and it's too short. I have to go to the sunshine for sure. Yeah. Because I mean, you know, I uh, I don't like when it's uh, when it's uh, really uh, dark in a place, and then uh, when it's really cold. That also, I, because I think I suffer from climate depression as well. Yeah. But there's another name for it. I don't remember the legal, uh, the medical term for it. S A. I think they call it seasonal affective disorder. Yes, seasonal affective dis disorder. Yes, and yeah. uh, so, like this morning, I, uh, like yesterday, I woke up on, on my way to work. It was so dark and so gloomy. Yeah. Uh, it just uh, destroyed my entire day because I'm like I'm not used to it. Which city are you? I live in um I I am in Iowa City, in oh, Iowa. Okay. Yeah. yeah, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I know cornfields. I know good wrestling. Yeah, so uh, but you know if I could live if I could live in a place where it's it's sunny like Hawaii, I would love or the Virgin Islands. I would love to live in a in a sunny place. Are you? Uh, from Haiti? I'm sorry? Are you from Haiti? Yes, Haiti. Yes. So yeah. It's sunny, right? Yeah. It's very sunny. Very, extremely sunny there. Always uh, 90 degrees, 100 degrees there. A little oh. bit too hot for me right now, <laughs> but if I could live in a tropical place where it's not as hot as Haiti, I would I would love it. Uh, so I want to talk uh, about uh, your life. I'm interested in, in learning about your life and, you know, how you... Uh, you said you live you live in in japan yeah yeah and uh i i, I was uh when i was researching you because i have a segment that i do online called uh fragrances from around the world where i will pick one perfume and i talk about them and research that person's life and i was researching your life when i saw your fragrances mm -hmm. and i read something online but you said not to believe not to believe everything that i read right <laughs> that i see online but what part of it was true? What part of it wasn't true? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> no, Who I, knows? I, I lived in Japan for a long time. For, for 10 a long years. time. Yeah, 10 years. And did you have a, you have you had a friend in Japan? Uh, someone you are you are friends with? I have many friends. Okay. If, so if, I, go back, if yeah. I go back for my vacation, I have to go see them. I okay miss. so what i what i read online was uh uh you had a friend uh, at a young age and something happened to that friend my friend in japan no nothing in japan something friend. no okay 
Then, not, okay, then not not in Japan. Maybe it's a different place or a different story. Okay. okay. Because when I when I saw that, I was like, wow, uh, it's something that happened to me at a very young age, and I did not I didn't did not know whether the article was was true or not. This is why I did not uh, do the video about oh. it. Oh. Ah. Okay. 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 Um, are you talking about like a friend of mine is very badly beaten? Yes, they did not mention what happened to the friend, but they said something that happened to your friend that caused yeah. you to go into depression. Yeah, that's right. You know, um, the human brain is not a perfect machine. Of course. And so if we put this in a very stressful situation, and okay. if you are young, mm -hmm. and if you cannot make a clear sense of your surrounding in the world or some violence or some things like this and sometimes your your brain cannot um, correctly process or make sense of this world so this is correct uh, actually the military doctor um, here in Canada actually he is from the states but I, I have the diagnosis of the, the disease. It's called the post-traumatic stress disorder. And it's a very odd, uh, very, very odd thing to happen to your brain. Uh, often people associate this with like uh, soldiers or military. And um, it just makes your brain very, uh, how should I say, irrational yeah. or, or like um, repeated cycle, thinking mm -hmm. the same thing over and over and over and over again. And you're very, very anxious. And um, so this can happen for a variety of reasons. Of course. Uh, and violence it's often um some cause for what cause the, the cause of that yes yeah so the main reason some people will get it or some uh -huh. people won't is after this situation something bad happens to the human's mind yes if they, if they can talk to somebody and they can understand it then usually they won't get this situation. Uh, I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if something bad happens and there is no person to help you to understand the world, um, in this case, uh, sometimes um, the chemicals and actually like the shape of the brain, it changes and yeah okay so it's very strange yeah but this, this is this is this is true so i take many kinds of medicine and tranquilizer and things like this to try to be like a little bit normal yeah <laughs> okay well you know i mean ptsd is is i mean i don't think i would ever understand it fully because you know i am not in that field but uh, I can understand, I can empathize with what someone said that, you know, they, 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 they are dealing with this. And and most of the time it never goes away. It just stays with you. Yeah, this is this is a problem because it it's uh, kind of, uh, as you know, um, you have a memory, memory bank system in your brain. Yeah. So some new information comes in and it should go store in a different region of your head. But okay. what, what, what the... PTSD is um, has something to do with the uh, amygdala, uh, and the alarm system is constantly overrunning the frontal cortex. Okay. So you know, uh, all the time in my spare time, like I take tranquilizer and, and, and antidepressants and things, but always engage my mind in like from positive creative activities, try to engage the frontal cortex, you know, higher thinking abilities. This is the best thing that we can do, I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you for sharing for sharing that with me. Uh, when I was reading about it, I said, wow, 
uh, you yeah. know, for you to to be so open about it. Some people they just don't, you know, not like to to talk, to talk about those things, those traumatic events that happened to them. But the fact yeah. that they're open about it and then let people know, you know, it's okay to talk about it. You know, it's not okay to yeah. just hide it and then suffer suffer in silence. Many many very good men, they better men than myself. They have this condition. They never say anything, and unfortunately, the suicide rate is very high. It's not good. So, um, human beings are not perfect because our machine, our computer, is not perfect. What can you do? Yes, yes. It, right. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I agree with you. So let's talk about something a little bit more fun than you know uh, fun now, right? Let's let's get you out of uh, out of that of that mood. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, the people in the chat they are you know saying that you know uh, this lady said you know she was diagnosed with PTSD because her son passed away, uh, mm -hmm. and you know a lot of people you know go to this. It's you know uh, mm -hmm. meant you know the the mind like you said it's it's a machine. It, it can do tricky things to you. Mm. you know it's yeah. i mean and it you know it, it's it's out there and i'm so glad that you know you bring it to light and then yeah. other people can learn from this to know you hey you know what you're not alone there are other people out there that are you know suffering from this lots of people they just never say you know it's uh if you feel sad this is normal but if your mind is constantly repeating and you can't look i was so bad i will tell you my condition i was very very bad I didn't want to leave my house ever. When I when I left my house, I wear like hoodie and then a mirror, sunglasses, and carry the knife with me. And uh -huh. even just to go to the library to take out some books, I'll have to drink like you know three shots of vodka just to get like courage to go outside. So it was not a good situation at all, you know. And uh, I had nobody to talk to because um, the my father, how old were you? My, 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 my father is not the kind of person to to talk to talk about things like that. No. Yeah. Not, no. No. Uh, he, how old were you? Own, he's very, very yeah. Okay. Much, much, much more sick than myself. So always, I was caring for him. Actually. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. No, it's okay. It's okay. You, you're not you're not sick me yeah uh, i'm i don't know i'm fine no yeah. you you went to a tra traumatic <laughs> you went you went to a tra traumatic event would you know cause you to you know to suffer from something but i mean the fact that you bring it bringing it to light you know to yeah. light and then you're talking about it and you can still talk about it you know makes you a very strong person in my opinion well thank you yes thank it you. takes a strong person to say hey i went to something traumatic and then I'm getting help for it, and then I know that I'm going through this, but I want people to know about it. You know, it doesn't, you know, that you're not perfect. You're letting people know, hey, I'm not perfect. So other people will know, hey, you know what? He's, he knows he's not perfect, so therefore it's okay for other people to come out and talk about what happened to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've never been to what, to what you were to, and I, I just cannot even imagine uh, having to go to this, you know, to see a friend getting, you know, getting hurt like that. But uh, uh, I mean, is yeah. your friend okay? Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Okay, all right. That's good to know. And yeah. you still in, are you still in contact with him? Um, no. Once well, when I go to my hometown. Okay. But uh, I don't go so often, you know. Okay, all right. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. So, yeah, how long you been married? Yeah, long time. Long time. Yes, like ten years. To the, to the same woman, I hope, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same. Okay. All right. So you have Madeline up to tell me what's in Madeline Peach. Ah, that sounds interesting. Uh, yeah, this one it's uh, like my mother's perfume. Um, uh, it's uh, named after my mother. Okay. Her name is Madeline. Marilyn, okay. And she is a, a very creative person like myself. And the idea, you know, it's a peach deeper. Uh -huh. So, of course, Mitsuko. Um, in the French, they call it Mitsuko. In the Japanese, it's Mitsuko. Okay. The, 
Gerlaine uh, or Mitsuko Peach. Chica was kind of an idea um, for this one. And yeah, so yeah. this one has lots of white flowers, ylang ylang, uh, peach accor, a little bit acidic, a okay. uh, little bit uh, juicy, uh, some things like this. So yeah. Okay, so I have one of your fragrances. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Choco Patchouli. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I love it. Uh, I, like did it. A, I did a video about it. I love this one. And uh, but the one thing, I wish you'd make them in bigger bottles. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, they are small. They're you, small. You sell them online on your website, right? I do. My, yeah. my, my bottle size is uh, 50, 50 ml. 50 ml, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you package them at home in your lab or do you send them out over to be Yeah, packaged? no, 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 no. I make everything with my hands. You make everything. Here. My, yeah, like I have, uh, I can show. I have some. I can see. <laughs> my oh, perfect. wow. Yeah, so here is um, my new bottles. I saw that on Instagram. Yeah. So they're cut. I, I like with, that bottle. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, they're cut uh, with. Um, I can't really see it, but yeah, yep. they, they they are cut uh, with the engraving, laser engraved, just to show the juice. You know, very simple, very clean, and no, they're uh, clean bottle. So, what is your website? Some people are asking, what is your website? Oh, uh, so it's perfumes.com, right? Yeah, exactly. Melig perfumes dot com. Exactly I'm right. Happy for, for for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone. It's yeah, Mel Melig perfumes dot com, guys. Uh, I, I have one of his fragrances that I purchased last year, and uh, because it was unique, when I read about uh, your your fragrances and, and the way you make them, and I was intrigued, and I said, well, let me buy one of them, and then I purchased it. And uh, I wore it a couple times, uh, but I try not to wear it, uh, not to wear it enough because it's so small. I want to, you know, keep it because it's it's different. It's nothing like I like. It's not it's not like anything that I have in my collection. It's just a different fragrance, and very beautiful and and, and very special fragrance. And uh, okay. that's one of those I said, you know, I needed to read about you and invite you uh, to come in and do uh, a, a live show with me. And you are the first, uh, you know, superstar that I've had on my show. <laughs> I'm not okay. I, I will agree with you. Okay, I am superstar. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll take it. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, you are the first superstar I've, I've had in my show, and and I really appreciate it. Uh, so, uh, Mushin Japanese okay. incense. This one sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah. I I I I. There's a town in Japan. Well, actually, many towns in Japan where um, they are doing the traditional artisan, um, handcrafted uh, ways of making art. Um, okay. And, and, and Jap Japanese culture is really interesting in that it's a very um, sensitive in a way. Okay. So I don't know if we compare Haiti's culture to America, but I assume, like, if we compare many cultures around the world to the United States, the United States is a very individualism, and um, even compared to Canada, it's a little bit more mellow, uh, more bold America. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very masculine and aggressive culture, I think. You, uh, and then in Japan, it's a very different um, kind of... Um, way way of how can i say like competing or 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 or, or making yourself proud okay. it, the Jap japanese way is like through doing through tasks and um doing a very excellent job at something whatever you're doing at that moment uh, okay so really uh japanese people love um very subtle uh nuanced concentrated artisanship and the machine is uh, fragrance 
it smells very similar to the temple's incense um, in Kyoto. When you're walking around mm -hmm. this city, there's many thousands of gardens and uh, temples and uh, everything is very thought out because the city is like, I don't know, 1,200, like 1,200 or 1,300 years more, maybe 1,400 years old, something like okay. that. And so everything is very purposeful and, and there's so many artists in there. And this temple incense, it's called Kiara, uh, which is like agar wood. And then uh -huh. sometimes they'll mix it with sandalwood, agar wood, uh, some spices like cinnamon, and then some cedar. And it's this kind of dry, but a little bit fruity. Sometimes the oud will have like a, a fruity uh, nuance or facet to it. But in the mushin, I made the top notes like for the first hour okay. to be smelling like the osmanthus fragrance. Mm -hmm. uh, the osmanthus is like this really creamy apricot, um, milky um, flower, and it grows okay. all over. Uh, all over in hot places, probably in Haiti, probably they have the Osmanthus. It's uh, a yes. little orange flower, you know, it smells like orange popsicle or cream okay. or gardenia a little bit. It's like peaches and gardenias and creams and popsicles and, and apricots. It's very fruity. So I put this on the top of the flower, uh, of, of the uh, Chiara incense accord that I made. And so this is the idea of this one but mostly uh, most of my perfumes like the ideas often they'll come from the material so you were talking about the chocolate patchouli yeah that one is like emphasizing the facets the different smells if you really pay attention to uh patchouli you can yes. often smell like um apple or apple cider you can smell like a mint uh, you can often smell chocolate. You can often smell like uh, aged, like oak barrel. You can often smell like green, bright, almost like pine notes in patchouli sometimes, in the very light patchoulis, and especially the patchouli uh, crystals. You can buy okay. patchouli crystal powders. Um, it's a patchouli alcohol. It's very piney and bright. And then, so this whole perfume is like an expression of the various facets with okay. that's inside of the patchouli. So many of my perfumes are kind of expressing these uh, one main material and then trying to stretch it out. Uh, okay. Yeah. Someone has a question for you. They said, do you sell samples? Oh yeah, I have the sample packs. Okay. So I did you guys do that? There's some, he has some sample packs on his website. Yeah. That you, you guys can buy the sample packs. Okay. So how do you get your inspiration to uh, to mix, you know, the ingredients to make the, the fragrance. What, I mean, how do you mix them? I, I'm always curious to see, you know, how did they come up with this fragrance? Yeah, yeah. So to be honest, often the materials will tell me what to do. So like when I smell patchouli, I can smell apples and wood and mint and chocolate. Uh -huh. Then I will, okay, oh, I'll go to, like I have 500 materials in here, like, oh, I'll get chocolate materials, apple, uh mints and then bring them all on my table uh -huh. and then i will smell and remind myself like how long does each one last uh -huh. and then i can begin to plan and build the fragrance uh according to like um, how how long uh, each material lasts okay. or sometimes i'll think like a place in my mind like oh i want to make um like a forest near my house. Okay. And so I write down, uh, I go for a walk through the forest and I write down everything. I smell like dirt and mushrooms and like salty ocean and seaweed. And I can smell like cold rocks or pine trees or, and then I write down all the things that I smell and I know my materials and you know, oh, this one smells like pine trees. This smells like cold rocks. This one smells like this. And then I try to make like the place. So sometimes places will uh, give me ideas for okay. 
like the atmosphere of the perfume. So how long does it take to make one perfume? Oh my goodness. I think, you know, they're never finished. So maybe if I have like two months to make mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A couple of times a week, I'll smell, draw it out, sketch it out, pictures, and then be very loose. Uh, let's say like Monday and Wednesday and Friday for like two months or something, reworking. Something okay. like that. Yeah. So, um, what made you uh, choose this this you know style of barrel, right? I mean, because ah. sometimes different different perfumers they have different you know different style for barrels, but all of the barrels are the same shape, the same style barrels. Yeah. Yeah. So I got the like this. Um, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So. I chose this style um, mainly because it's a very classic style um, and uh, it's strong. If you drop it, it's not going to break. <laughs> That's yes. important. And it's solid. And I think it's both unisex, masculine and feminine. And okay. with the new design, I just want to emphasize the quality of the juice because I use like uh, very, very, very expensive essential oils. Um, so yeah, try to uh, something classic. I like it. Okay. You know, and 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 it's a little looks a little bit like Chanel's bottle. I like. Yes. I like her because she's very interesting. Had a very interesting life. Mm -hmm. You know, she was uh, uh, extremely poor when she was a child um, and kind of crazy and driven and very very uh worked very hard and she achieved some dreams so okay. also I, I like that um yeah so are your perfumes sold all, all, all around the world or do they sell them do you sell them in different countries yeah yeah i have i'm, I'm selling now beginning to sell in europe and I sell in, um, I'm going to sell in Australia soon. Okay. And I don't have a store in Asia yet, but I think uh, I will do this soon, probably. So, so okay. I sell from my website, but also in some stores in larger cities. Okay. Like, uh, New York um, and Budapest, Hungary has a store, a nice store, Cherry Garden. Okay. And Cherry Garden is a very beautiful store. They're selling mine. And in Montreal, mm -hmm. a store there is selling my perfumes. Okay. Uh, have you ever tried to sell uh, uh, to maybe uh, the discounters uh, stores for, so they can sell your fragrances for you? No. No? They, I wouldn't be able to afford how the materials i use are so expensive it's impossible to sell to a discount store to discount stores okay yeah the, so, some perfumers they don't sell to discount stores uh and so what's next for meleg uh uh, uh perfumes what oh, can we expect next uh coming out in 2020 2022 and 2023 i have the uh, i think five or six perfumes coming out oh Good. wow yeah uh, maybe every month I will release one every, every month. month yeah every month or every other month okay um this is my goal and the first one it's uh ara shiyama a r a s ara shiyama okay yeah. ara shiyama and this is like uh again it's kind of inspiration mm -hmm. A very inspirational, beautiful place, town in Japan. Um, okay. You can Google this word Arashiyama and you see the images. It's really nice. Okay. Yeah. So, do you wake up in the morning when you what's your day like when you wake up? You just wake up and you say, I'm going to make perfumes today, and then you stop making it, or do you uh, plan it, you know, for some time? Mm, usually, I wake up and I go jogging with my dog. Uh, I try to exercise. 
and usually like run with my dog around around the city uh, okay. and um, uh, then I will come and, and do some orders whatever must be sent out okay and always relearning my materials studying my materials and I, I can like just uh, And you can't even. Wow. No, no, no. It's like nothing. I have <laughs> behind my computer, there's like this big laboratory, you know? I bet. Yeah. I I, I can show you if, if I had a, a, my cell phone, but now, now I don't have my. Uh, because we're connected with my desktop. Okay. Yeah. And so you you just study your, mat your material and then you say, okay, maybe next month I'm going to create this fragrance. And do you, when you, have you ever made a mistake uh, when you create when you're like, I don't like this one, you need to start again or maybe change some material? Everything is a mistake, like every time. <laughs> it's <laughs> always making mistakes every, every day, always, always, uh, but... So do you make when you okay let's just say if you're making a fragrance uh you say i'm gonna make a fragrance you know uh for to release maybe in three months from now do you just okay. make like one small uh batch of it then if you like it and then you just make more or uh no so i have like an idea in my mind okay so this idea i, I tell you about the the the, the arashiyama one uh-huh it's um so, for example, this perfume, the Arashiyama idea, is okay. like uh, in the winter time in 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 Japan, they will take the yuzu fruits uh -huh. and they'll cut them or they'll crack them a little bit and throw them into the uh, onsen, like the um, volcanic mineral water. Okay. And so you sit in the bathtub with the mineral volcanic water with the yuzu fruits floating on the water okay and then in the bathroom like the the uh the room is usually made out of like hinoki or cedar wood and so you have the minerals from the bathtub and then the yuzu uh water the fruits zest of the fruits it's like bitter green like almost like grapefruit and lemon a little bit and then the cedar wood and then the smell of the salt and the minerals uh, so I have like this idea, this image, and I write it down. Okay. Um, and then I collect all my materials from around my laboratory, and then I start to build it, the fragrance. Um, and of course, you make mistakes because sometimes one wood is a better choice for the mm -hmm. vision you might have than this wood. But if it's good or if it's bad, I, I don't know. I just don't. Um, I don't compromise. I don't compromise on a couple things. I won't compromise on the vision when trying to create like something very specific. The vision, mm -hmm. so I won't compromise with that, and I won't compromise with the uh, the quality of uh, the essential oils that I'm using. Okay. So as long as I have a clear picture, and as long as the fragrance is a little bit bold. And I'm using very, very, very good materials. If the people like it or don't like it, then just I, I can't tell. I don't know how, how I cannot. I don't know if they'll like it or if they won't like it. I have no okay. idea, really. Uh, so sometimes perfume will sell, or sometimes it won't. But either way, I won't compromise with these things. So, okay. Yeah. So who, who who do you have smell your fragrances for you uh, after you uh, after you make them? Your yeah. wife doesn't like perfumes. No, <laughs> no, no, nobody. Just just myself, really. Just yourself. Yeah. Okay. No, nobody. I can. I mean, I, I know a perfume should last a long time. I know a perfume has to be diffusive. Okay. I, I know like what. Some good qualities should be so I trust myself and um, if it's performing good and 
I mean, if it lasts a long time and if it it has like the diffusion and some character, then yes. that's okay. That's the main. That's okay. sufficient. It's set, and I trust myself. Okay. So, do you wear your own perfumes? No. <laughs> you don't. I, I okay. know. That's when interesting. I, I, I wish I can show you my laboratory. Honestly, like it's so stinky in here. <laughs> it's so stinky. Like I am surrounded by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bottles. Like, and, okay. And so when I leave my laboratory, mm -hmm. and right now my laboratory is quiet because I don't have the fans on. But uh, when I'm working, as soon as we're done the interview, I'll, I'll do a little bit of work tonight. I turn on my fans and it's taking out the smell, you know? And when uh -huh. I'm doing work, I take a shower and I don't wear perfume because I, You smell it all day long. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, of course, I love good something that smells good, of course. And I buy perfumes and I go to the store. But I don't want to be surrounded by like 24 7, no. Okay, I see. Yeah, you know. Wow, that's in, that's interesting that you don't uh, you don't wear them, and then your wife your wife hates perfume, so it's not like you she has. Are, are you ever gonna make one for her? Do you have one that uh, has her name on it? No, she won't like it anyways. She's not impressed. But you can still make it in her honor, right? I mean, just have her name on it. Yeah, I don't know. She's hard to impress. I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> Maybe one day, one day, you know. Yeah, we'll, so we'll have to see. <laughs> if you meet any perfumer, who, who would you want to meet? Um, you know, I think um, a perfumer. There's many, 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 many good perfumers. One perfumer that i really you know um admire is the guy he made um chanel number no. five you know oh um, uh, what is his name oh. yeah he's, he's he's a russian french guy yeah yeah, yeah. He, he's he started making it after uh after coco uh, after uh 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 gabriel passed away no 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 ernest bo ernest bo um but he he, he died a, a long time ago Chanel number five um it, he comes from uh you know it was made like in 1921 or something like this yeah and the man was like in two wars uh and um I don't know if you know the history of, of uh, my family is Eastern European, but in Eastern Europe, you know, they had like the revolution and anybody who had any kind of property or any money at all, the government took everything. They took it away, yeah. Yeah, they took it away. So uh, he had his family's everything taken away or he was kicked out or punished. Uh, because he was like a different kind of class. They had like a class system in, okay. in Russia. So actually until like 1869 or something, um, the peasants, the people, they were owned uh, by the landlord. So if the owner of the land will like sell the land, also the people came with the land, like they're not exactly slave, but kind of very similar. Uh, okay. So, but he was from kind of the chemistry class, like a different group. And so of course he's like a target, right? For the government, but he, he was declared enemy of the state. Uh, and then he was kicked out and then his business taken away and he brought his knowledge and know-how France, he left, but then he was like in two big wars. And actually, uh, Chanel number no. five is kind of the aldehyde, um, the C12, 
you know, when you yeah. first, when you spray mm -hmm. uh, Chanel number no. five, it smells very cold and, and minty or like champagne, you know, yes. bubbly opening. And he put it in this perfume because he said it reminded him of when he was sent to like a labor camp or something way up north. Okay. Northern Russia. So he, he, his, his, and then of course he made the perfume in Southern France in Grasse. So the opening of the perfume is his memories in, um, in the cold, cold area. But as when the soap and the champagne and the coldness from Chanel number no. five dries down to uh, the, the florals, especially the May rose. Yeah. Uh, and this perfume still has like, um, there's a farmer in, in France and he has a contract for like his family for 150 years with Chanel. All the roses, it comes from one farm there. So I would like to meet Ernest Debeau. Uh, okay. He's, I can't imagine his life experience. I, yeah. Yeah. So someone has a question for you. How old is Matt? Me? Oh, guess how old do you think I am? Uh, 35. Oh, I wish I was so young. Okay. So <laughs> the person, you're not going to get that question, that answer. <laughs> I'm 42. 43. 42. 43. 43, 43 in March. In March then. You, are, you, are, you, are, you are very young. So here's another question. Does Matt have a YouTube channel? Yes, Matt has a YouTube channel and it's uh, Meleg Perfumes. If you uh, you can go to his channel and subscribe, but you don't do much with YouTube, YouTube anymore. You do uh, mostly with Instagram, right? Instagram. I'm always on Instagram. It's very easy. Just yeah. load on. Yeah. And, and you guys, you guys should know that Matt is very personable. So when I reach out to him, he responded right away. And you are the only person that actually I've reached out to as a perfumer who actually responded to me. Really? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Most most of them they don't respond, or they have you know someone from their Instagram page respond to you and then you don't you don't hear from them anymore. You no, you responded no. right away. I was like, wow. As, and when you said it was you, I said, oh my gosh, it's you actually responding to me. It's uh, you know my family is they're Slovak, Slovakia, you know, so it's our culture not to even if you're like a billionaire or something never be proud it's not good it's really not good in, in yeah. the eastern okay. european culture you don't yeah no okay so what other languages do you speak matt ah uh, you know in canada i had to study french okay for 10 years but no so just, I'm going to say, I know like swear words from many languages, but just, uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. I know just, uh, just the uh, Japanese and, and English. This is it. Okay. And you, you fluent in, in French? Mm, no, 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 no. Well, no. okay. Let me put you to, uh, on the spot. Say something in French. Uh, bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows bonjour, Matt. <laughs> yeah. This is it. <laughs> I think my glasses are crooked. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bonjour. Okay. So uh you put in out you say you have six fragrances you're going to release in, in uh within six months. I hope so. I think so. Wow. I will try. I will try. Yeah. So how many do you release a year? Uh it depends on the year. I think last year only two. And then the okay. year before. But that, in twenty twenty you had a lot of them released. Or something in my first year. Your first year, you had 40, 45. 45? No, no, 15. But you maybe. said you took 45 of them to uh, to this guy, uh, to... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I have, I have like, yeah, I have perfumes everywhere here. Uh, but I'm not releasing them because I'm not happy uh, with, with that, so... Okay. Yeah. So we're almost done because I was only going to keep you for an hour. So how many uh, fragrances do you think you'll make in the next 10 years? In the next 10 years, mm -hmm. difficult question. I don't know. I don't know. I hope I, I just hope I make um, nice, beautiful perfume. Okay. And, okay. and I hope I have a nice, happy and healthy life and make uh, some beautiful art. That's it. 
Yeah. So what do you do for fun besides spending time with, with, with perfumes that you don't wear and your pet and your dog? Uh, recently, I've been lazy in the winter time. Uh, but when I can do, I like to do like, martial arts. Martial arts, okay. I like the wrestling. Yeah, my business feel, feel beautiful. Okay. And do you uh, do you do any kind of uh, weightlifting? Which one? Weightlifting, Weight exercise uh, with weights, uh, bodybuilding. No, I still have the uh, muscles from the farm, from working always, like digging. Okay. Yeah, just uh, my family is like. Mm. Into farming. Okay, and your your do you have siblings? Yeah, I have a sister. Okay. Yeah, in Chicago. Oh, someone said that uh, he loves your haircut. My <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need. To, I need. Yeah, my hair is uh, for me today. It's it's a different haircut. Yeah. And and I have to say, you look very stunning. I mean, your outfit, your your. Your shirt, your tie, and your uh, jacket, uh, uh, you look very well put together, very handsome. Well, and I thanks. really appreciate you uh, coming to the show tonight and telling us about yourself and sharing your life with us. Yeah, uh, you look very beautiful today. You know, oh, we have to do some nice things in the winter time. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah I hope one, one of these is if I ever make it to Toronto, I get to meet you and your wife. Yeah, maybe, or if you come to Vancouver or Calgary. It's, yes. Uh, I will uh, show I'd you. I like to visit your lab because I've never visited a perfume lab uh, uh, before. Yeah. Visit yeah. your lab to see what your lab is like. I wish I can show you. Um, I can't pick up. But I can't pick up my my my. Uh, your computer, okay. Yeah, it's it's a big one, you know. Uh huh. Okay. Well, maybe uh, next time uh, I'll get to see your lab. So okay, next time I show you guys a tour of the laboratory. Uh -huh. Next time okay. I show you a laboratory tour. Okay, all right. So anything else you want to tell uh, people about you? Anything you you want people to know? I mean, your website. The website is melegperfumes.com, guys. If you guys want to uh, visit, he has many fragrances, beautiful fragrances, and the sizes are 1.7, and they're very affordable and very fast shipping. Because when well, I ordered mine, I received it very quick. I can't, I, I can't say I can't say they're very affordable. They're they're not so cheap, but they're but, good. But they're, they're made I mean, with for the, for the ingredient. For the ingredient that you put into them, I think I think they are affordable in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a to, to it's interesting. Any artist, someone who's making art, sometimes they can't even afford like their own art. Um, it's a common problem, you know. Many people, uh, painters or something, they'll make the expensive art, and then they themselves would never be able to afford to buy it. I, I could buy my perfumes, of course, but um, there's no way for me to make them cheap just because of the materials. I can show you some weird things. So expensive. Uh, yeah. Okay. Next time, uh, I will give you a laboratory tour. Okay, I would I would love that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. And, and tell your wife thank you for sharing you with me tonight, and, <laughs> and, and my subscribers. Uh, I really appreciate I, it. I, and... I, I wish I need to go on a vacation. <laughs> yes, I, I'm looking forward to buying one of the other fragrances, the one, one of the ones that you have coming out. Yeah. Uh, very soon, and then I will make sure that I check out your Instagram your Instagram page as well. Oh, thank you, doctor. Thank you. Have a good night. And then thank, thank you guys for being here. I really enjoyed this. Thanks. Good night. Bye-bye, guys. Bye, Bye now. Bye-bye.